At quite a few points in these videos, I've used the terms properties and observables to describe things that were part of the ScalaFX library. But I haven't really gone into detail about them, and it's time that we actually look into them in a bit more detail than we've done so far. So if you look in the API, there is a ScalaFX.Beans.Property package, which we actually looked at a little bit. Uh, and it has a number of things in it that end in the word property. There's boolean property, double property, float property, integer property, long property, a string property, and kind of the all-inclusive object, object property. If we click on one of these, we can see that A, they have a few interesting symbols defined on them. We'll come back to that in a uh, later video. Also, when we have written code that uses this on change, we were calling this function right here, which takes an argument by name and winds up executing it when something changes. You can also register code to be called when the property is invalidated. All of these properties have a value to them so that you can get out the value. Of course, if this were a string property, value would give us back a string. If it were an integer property, it would give us back an int, etc. The idea of properties and what kind of really makes them powerful to us is really this method right here, the on change. The fact that unlike a normal int, so if we just made a var int, when that int changes, nothing else in the program knows about it. So, so you would have to manually make sure that every time that you change that int, anything that depended upon it was altered. You can do that, but it winds up being kind of a pain after a while. By using an integer property for that same thing, you could register code under the on change and make it so that any time the, the integer changed, that code was executed. You can also use some of these interesting operators up here, they're called bindings, in order to make it so that things automatically update for you. Closely related to the properties are the collections. We saw an example of an observable buffer in one of the videos where we were talking about a control that had to be created with an observable buffer. Uh, that was the table view. And the observable buffer is in many ways like a list or an array. It has the same types of, of behaviors that you would expect from lists and arrays in many ways. There's things like flat map <coughs> and filter and map. Okay, so many of the methods that you're used to from sequences are, are here. But this observable part means that you can have code set up that will check to see when things are altered inside of here. So note there is an on change here so that when something changes in this collection, you can make code that's called. Indeed, the table view takes advantage of that. So if we had added new things to our data, the table view would have automatically updated because it was watching this observable buffer and it was executing code so that when the observable buffer had changed, it would have automatically updated the table. We didn't write anything to, to do this, but you could go back to that example, put some buttons in there and make it so that when you click a button, it adds new data to the observable buffer called data, and it would automatically be populated inside of the table. So this is also why we have these apply methods that were in a number of, of different places because it turns out that calling apply for example on a string property gives you back the string uh, we could also have called the value on there um, but that's why they were there because the things like on a let's go look at a text field here the text fields text is not actually a string the text field's text is a string property. And so that's why we were calling apply 
in various locations so that we could get the actual string value from here. Without that, you're getting a string property, which does have nice things like it can have an onChange method, but it's not the same as, as a normal string. So hopefully that helps to clarify some things that we've seen previously. We're going to play with these properties and bindings in the next video where we'll, or these properties and observable lists, where in the next video where we will actually start using these kind of magic things called bindings that allow you to make it so that when something changes, it automatically updates something else.